Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I made my own hat cam rig to use with a GoPro. So we'll start off with the hat itself. I use this Columbia stretch fit hat. Really just about any hat should work. One thing you'll wanna look for though is something with a little bit of stiffness here in these front two panels. That's just to help give the bill a little bit of extra support. That way, once I get my camera mounted to the end of it here and there's a little bit of weight there, my bill isn't gonna go drooping down on me. And the part here that actually holds onto the GoPro, I made that myself out of ABS plastic. I used 3 8 inch thickness for the middle piece. And if you take your GoPro and you measure the distance between the outside of the two mounting tabs, that's about 3 8 of an inch. So this 3 8 inch plastic worked perfect for this. And then I used 8 inch ABS for the two arms that hold onto the GoPro. And for anybody considering making something like this, one little trick I like to use when cutting duplicate parts like these, I'll make the initial rough cut, I'll cut them out individually. After that though, I'll tape the two parts together using some double-sided carpet tape. And I'll do that before I do all the final grinding and sanding and, and drilling the holes through there. That way I end up with two identical parts. And you can see this side is textured. The other side is smooth. I'll usually tape them together with the textured side facing each other. That way it's a little bit easier to get them apart once you're all done working on them. And you don't need to stick a knife or a flathead screwdriver in there to pry them apart. You can see there's two little machine screws on each side. Little 440 machine screws. Those screw directly into this piece of 3 8 inch ABS. And the whole thing is attached to the hat using these two screws here going through the bottom of the bill up into the middle part here and then there's one more screw inside here a little black one there if you can see that that goes in right about here and i countersunk that hole a little bit oversized that way once i got that screw in there and it had the fabric pinched in between there it would still sit nice and flat that way i don't get a pressure point on my forehead that would probably lead to a headache after wearing it for about 20 minutes and so I had something for the thumb screw to thread into. I took one of these little GoPro accessory arms. And I used my Dremel tool to basically just cut out the round plastic piece here that holds onto this nut. So that's about what I ended up with. And then I used some two-part epoxy to just glue that right onto the little arm here. And so far that's held up well. And the GoPro that I use with this setup is a Hero 5 Black Edition. See, so I have a Polar Pro polarizer lens on there. And I had to do a little bit of brainstorming when I first got this camera. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to mount it. It came with a frame mount, but I realized that every time I was going to switch the battery, I would have to pull off this polarizer filter and then pull the camera out of the frame mount just to be able to access that battery door. And that wasn't going to work for me. So I took that frame mount and I attacked it with my Dremel tool and ended up with basically what you see here. I cut out the rectangular section with the two mounting tabs and made a little hole for the record button there. And then I just glued it down to the top of the GoPro using some of that two-part epoxy. I scuffed up the top side of the GoPro a little bit too with my Dremel tool just because of this rubberized coating. I found that stuff doesn't really like to stick to it so I wanted to make sure I got a good bond and it's not going to just drop into the water one of these days. <laughs> and then to fill the gap here between those two mounting tabs I again used some of that eighth inch ABS. I think they skimped me on the thickness a little bit. I'd use some electrical tape to kind of make these spacers there to give it a nice snug fit. Then I also added this little clip to the top side of that, and that holds onto my lapel mic. So we'll get that attached to the hat. I like to run my microphone cord up through the two arms there. Put the thumb screw through there. There we go, get that lapel mic 
in place. I prefer to have the lapel mic mounted up here rather than on my collar. Um, for one, it's always the same distance from, from my face, so my voice isn't going to be muffled when I turn my head to the side or anything like that. And it actually doesn't pick up my voice quite as loud as it would if it was attached to my shirt collar, which I like because I boost the audio quite a bit, usually by about 18 decibels. That's so I can get a good pickup on all the nature sounds, the birds chirping, fish splashing, all that good stuff. And I made this rig so that the camera hangs over the bill a little bit. Nice thing about that is the GoPro, it has that built in LCD. I don't sit there and watch it, but when I catch a fish and I'm holding it up to the camera, I like to just glance up there and make sure I'm somewhat close to the middle of the field of view. And I can also keep an eye on my battery charge indicator there and then the record indicator, just to make sure that I'm actually recording when I think I am. There's been a couple of times with my old camera where I got nice fish and I thought I was recording, but the camera wasn't turned on, so that's always frustrating. And I really like this Hero 5 compared to the Hero 4 Silver Edition that I've been using the last few years. This one also has a built-in LCD. For one, it's a lot lighter just because you don't need the waterproof housing with the Hero 5. And another problem I had with the housing was when I would try to look at that screen with my polarized sunglasses on, it just didn't work. This clear plastic, for some reason when you wear your polarized sunglasses, it gives you that crazy kind of psychedelic color reflection that you sometimes get with polarized shades and it made it almost impossible to see that LCD screen. Another reason I really like this Hero 5 is because it has stabilization. So when I have it out at the end of my bill with my old camera, I noticed sometimes when I would talk, I'd get a little bit of camera shake because my face is probably moving a little bit when I talk and I don't have that problem with the Hero 5. So I've been really happy with this new GoPro. And the lapel mic that I use here, it's an Audio-Technica ATR3350 lapel mic. The cord just runs down here in through the slit here, and then it runs inside the flap on the inside of the hat and then comes out the back. And that leads to my Zoom H1 audio recorder which I have inside this plastic bag just to kind of make it splash proof at least. And for anybody using one of these Zoom H1s, I highly recommend grabbing a set of these Eneloop batteries. I tried them with Alkalines when I first got my, my first Zoom H1 and I got maybe two, three hours of record time out of it before the batteries died. I get seven or eight hours out of these Eneloops and they're rechargeable too. You can recharge them like 2,000 times, so they're well worth the money. One other little modification that I made to the, the lapel mic, you can see the splice in the cord here. It came with this little battery capsule, but I really didn't need it. The Zoom H1, it has plug-in power and that actually supplies the microphone with power. And running it off the Zoom H1 without this, I actually get a hotter signal than, than having this. So the Zoom much give, must give it a little bit more voltage than this was. Plus I don't have to constantly go and buy the little watch batteries to feed this thing. So if you have a setup like this with the audio recorder that has plug-in power and you have a lapel mic with one of these little guys, and if you know how to solder wires back together, get rid of it because you're basically paying money for those batteries to get an inferior recording. But there's one more look at it. I think that covers just about everything. I really like this camera rig. I've got some great footage with it already this year and Still got lots of fishing left to do this summer. Thanks for watching. And hopefully if you're thinking about making something like this yourself, you came away with a few ideas from this video.
but I'm gonna hit the water and see if I can get a couple fish on camera. I'll see you guys later.